I'm Adam Sessler. I'm here at Nord Headquarters. Um, instead of me screwing your names up, I'm going to have you introduce yourselves. I'm <laughs> Mike Hasser Raphael. Kyle Elam, Elamite Warrior. And Andy Bravo Dudinsky. And I will concede right now, all three of these men play games better than I do. Uh, <laughs> they're all MLG guys or former MLG guys. Uh, what they want to talk about is that uh, we have the luxury of getting to really play anything that's available now. But back when we were all young, games were a little harder to come by. You, know, you need a mom and dad to get the money to pay for what was pretty expensive. And so I, I've noticed over the years that I have such a strong relationship with those classic games because they meant so much to me. And I was curious, like, what were those like original ones that you just played to death despite the fact they may have been good or bad? You know, a lot of people don't know some of the games, you know, my age that I actually played. And I played, started really, really young. So I, I played, uh, I talked to you about this a little while ago, King's Quest, uh, you know, on the PC, like uh, Quest for Glory, some of those games. Um, you know, maybe some people would recognize this one. I played a game called Shadowrun on the Sega Genesis. And that game was amazing. And a lot of people, like, you know, they have no idea. They've never heard of that game. And, and for me, that's, like, one of the best games ever made, one of the most immersive games. I was way ahead of its time. So, you know, a lot of different games when I was young, I got a chance to play, and now I'm kind of more of a straight shooters kind of guy. But, you know, I still would love to go back and, and play those games. I'm sure they give me plenty of entertainment value. Yeah, Shadowrun actually got a reboot. It, it didn't do very well, but it did get a reboot about two, three years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was an all multiplayer game. MLG title as well. Yeah, Shadowrun, it was uh, MLG title for about six months, and it was viewed as, at the time, perhaps the most competitively balanced title just because of the magic and the tech and the way the races worked. Um, but most people decided that from a spectator standpoint, the learning curve, to be able to commentate and learn that game, there was just way too much going on. But yeah, Shadowrun for the Super Nintendo. I remember playing. I actually, I actually competed in Shadowrun as well as Halo at the time, uh, trying to do both, well, I was doing both games. And Shadowrun, from my opinion, is one of the most competitive games that of its time. Like, as competitive as Halo, as competitive as anything gets, I think a lot of the downfall of it was no you know, single player mode. So a lot of people who aren't as into the multiplayer games never picked it up and would never understand it. But it was like almost a perfect mix of Counter Strike and Halo and and World of Warcraft almost. It's such a great mix of everything. I thought the competitiveness of it was great as well. Um I'm absolutely fascinated by what we just talked about with with Shadowrun right there. I mean I, I always assumed that you know, having nothing to do with with the quality of the game, that it, it was an old IP that that no one knew about, and it's hard to actually find that audience. But when, when when you look at a game like that, I don't think I actually saw it at the depth that that that, that you guys did. If you wouldn't mind just kind of explaining what it was doing that was so distinct from, say, Call of Duty or Halo, you know, games that, that most people are, are aware of. I think uh, you know, most of the games, Halo, Call of Duty, and whatnot, have kind of just a smaller aspect of just a first person shooter. There's not, you know, there's a map, you run around, you shoot, you capture the flag, you do that. This game like took it to the next level to where, you know, like teleportation and all the different kind of attributes and gun upgrades and a full, it's, it was like a five round match. And by the end of the fifth round, the game has also completely changed the weapons, the, the tech, the upgrades. It just constantly was changing and and there was, the, I think, the skill level and the skill gap between the, the best players and the not as great players, you know, that level was unlike any of the other games because of everything that the game brought. All right. Um, oh. And something else that I think Halo fans would appreciate, I, before Reach came out, I was reading, I don't know if it was a project lead or a design lead, but from Shadowrun came over for Reach. Um, so that bl that bloom you see in the DMR in Halo Reach, that comes from the uh, rifle in Shadowrun. And if you look at Sword Base, a Halo Reach beta map, a three-level map with a large center column for jetpacking, I mean, it's it's so much like Shadowrun. When we were playing that, it was just like, this is Shadowrun, you know, with that blooming rifle. And um, the way that, I mean, what Kyle began to touch on was Halo is the three-point system, shoot, melee, and grenade, you know, and Shadowrun just takes that, turns it on its head, you know, and I was wondering how can, if a guy's teleporting through walls, how can you chase him? It's like, oh, you know, you can find, there's little nooks and crannies, like, the way that the maps are built, they're so, they're beautiful maps, but there's little nooks and crannies, if you stand six places to the left here and teleport up here, you can get through the ceiling, but you can't get to the ceiling here, so, from a competitive aspect, if you have all that game knowledge, you know, it's just, 
crazy to know that you can chase that guy who's going that way if you teleport right at this exact spot in the wall. Like stuff like that was what really made that game interesting. And unfortunately, that learning that curve never even hit its peak because the game was retired so quickly. But I think if Shadow Run was ever picked back up by some guy who wanted to fund a Shadow Run tournament, <laughs> it would be absolutely awesome. I would be more than happy to compete in another Shadow Run tournament. But uh, yeah, like Andy was saying, there was just so much to the game and. I, like as soon as the game came out, I went and bought four copies of it because I first of all I have lots of brothers and whatnot, but okay, I thought the game people. right well, like, for other people why would you do that? <laughs> for even people that came over to my house, I'd be like, okay, play, let's play Shadowrun here. I'll give you the copy. You know, like that's how much I love that game, and it, it sucks to see it go. I mean, it, it was what, what, was it Zipper Interactive that. I, I felt it was it was it was the Mech Assault people that that made that, made that game. I didn't, we didn't bring up the cross platform. You could Ooh. play PC gamers right. on the Xbox, and that was crazy to begin with, too. I, I, I know we're, we're, we're talking about old games, so I'm absolutely fascinated by this right now. I, I've, I've, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to get your opinions on what that's like. If you're playing on a console and you're playing against someone on a PC, like if, if somebody actually has an edge or something like that. I absolutely think that PC gamers have an edge over console gamers. The, the way you can move a mouse and the speed, just how you accurately you can control it, and with hot keys and, and whatnot like that, I think uh, the PC would definitely have an advantage over a console gamer. Got to agree. Got to agree with that. But I want to clear something up too. By the way, we got we got into this whole discussion about Shadowrun, <laughs> but uh, you know, but actually, the Shadowrun that I was talking about was a completely different <laughs> Shadowrun. <laughs> yeah. We know. We so know. okay. So they, so I just want to clear that up. We just we, we went from Shadowrun on Sega Genesis into the Shadowrun that you know eventually became the competitive shooter that we're talking about. Um, guys, welcome to the free association nightmare that is my life. <laughs> yeah, I have now just brought you all into it. Um, going back to those classic games, what was was sort of that first game, you know, shooter or not, that just kind of became that obsession for you when you were young? I say the first, uh, first games that I remember playing way too much of was Paperboy on NES, just because I didn't. I mean, I was. I guess a third person. A it's third. A side yeah, I always thought about this. I always thought about what if you just took an original shooter and changed the graphics so you're just pointing at things. So I guess Paperboy was an excellent shooter for its time. And then after that, I mean, I'm I'm only 21, so my real uh, memories of a shooter, of course, would be Goldeneye. Um, just, just trying to speed like speed through levels. No multiplayer, you know. Just trying to beat levels as fast as I can. I mean, limited multiplayer. I'm an only child. Deprived, gaming-wise, <laughs> so I was just really good at beating Runway in 36 seconds and stuff like that, um, if you will. I don't even know if that's a good time. That could be a terrible time. But um, so, uh, Super Nintendo and N64 were my first real memories, Adam. That uh, when I, you know, sitting alone in my basement, with my parents upstairs. Yeah, I absolutely loved GoldenEye when it came out. Like I said, I do have a bunch of brothers and. Uh, we would play multiplayer all the time, like uh, every night, you know, after curfew, basically. So, GoldenEye was my by far my favorite, my first real competitive game, and then on to Perfect Dark after that. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Okay. Perfect Dark, yeah. I thought that game was just great. Uh, Flying Zero. No, no. <laughs> God, I was so excited for Perfect Dark Zero, but man, I thought that was a pretty big flop. But GoldenEye running around with the Golden Gun, or Perfect Dark running around with the Slayer missiles that you can control in the air. Uh, I loved both of those games. I actually didn't even get my multiplayer start until Halo 2 came out. It was the first time I ever played a game online. So I had a really late start in regards to yeah, multiplayer actually, and yeah, online I'd gaming. Say, I'd say a lot of actually some of the top MLG guys really started with Halo 2 because I actually got Xbox Live. I mean, I was playing America's Army, but I got Xbox Live in preparation for Halo 2 and I played Counter-Strike for like a year just because I knew Halo 2 was announced on Xbox Live. Um, but I think, surprisingly, a lot of the guys who are at the top of MLG right now um, specialize in Halo, and that was their first online experience. Um, I, 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 th I think that's a testament that uh, I'm guilty of this too, but there, 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 there is that tendency, I think, in the journalist place to kind of, you know, poo-poo the most popular game franchises like Halo, like Call of Duty. But I think you just made a testament to what was so significant and, and what Bungie did. I mean, they brought it online. They had controls that worked on a console. I mean, I don't think the game industry would even exist now if it hadn't been for that franchise because you know, there's, there's, there's so much that that's so important about that. Um, so my game that was an obsession wasn't even one that I got to own first. It was Ghosts and Goblins. And there was this uh, bowling alley near where I lived in Richmond, California. 
and I would go there on Fridays because I found a way to trick my friend's parents into not making me ride the bus. They would drop me off at the BART station, which was the other form of public transportation I would have to take. So I would pocket the 40 cents with the quarter that I had. And then I'd save up enough during the course of the week <laughs> that I would go there to play this game, which I didn't know at the time, but now I know now, was one of the hardest games ever made. <laughs> and, but the thing is, I think it was probably nine years old. I'm going to this arcade that... Any reasonable adult, which I guess were not there, should have looked at me and said, "Kid, you shouldn't be here by yourself." It's just, it was, it was just shady. It was creepy. It was smelly. <laughs> and I have this very strong memory of this one man that was so good at the game, and I would watch him play it. He would sit there, and it was th this was during the time of Prince, so he had a fingerless mesh glove on one hand. And I remember he would smoke more cigarettes, and he would just sit there and just do really well. I would try to just watch what he was doing to figure out how to get through all those various levels. And so I think that games were good in that I got into games, but they taught me to be a con artist, <laughs> and to go to places well outside of my comfort zone and interact with people that are completely creepy. So uh, when, when, when we finally got the game on the NES, my brother and I, would play it obsessively because it was so hard and you couldn't save back then. So it was always that, like, put it on pause, try to hide the NES so mom doesn't turn it off. <laughs> and, and it probably was about a month and a half until we finally got through to the end. And I don't know if you've ever played this game. It has one of the most notorious endings in video games where we finally beat the boss. My brother and I are high-fiving. We're so happy. And then this thing comes on the screen and says, that wasn't the real Satan that you killed you have to go back and do it all over again to really fight him. And the game just starts over. And <laughs> it taught me also another important adult lesson. <laughs> it's called disappointment and that everyone's a liar. And <laughs> my brother just had never dealt with that before, so he kind of started crying. <laughs> yep. I just kind of went cold. <laughs> Like, I've, I've, I've now crossed some sort of threshold in growing up. And, yeah, so once again, I think we just established video games. They're very important for people. It's not just about having fun. Thanks, guys, so much for your time. <laughs> Thank you.